You go in? Yeah, we are now live, at least uh, on WebEx Memorex. Okay. Uh, it's just Lynn Buchanan and I here, Aesthetic Impact Informational Sur in Services, and we're going to have a small exercise in why it is important to develop your senses and this exercise is termed developing your observational skills describe this scene and I'm just going to let Lynn lead this exercise and people who weren't able to be here with us today can tune in at their leisure via recording so go ahead Lynn Buchanan okay <clears throat> excuse me um, controlled remote viewing everybody gets the idea that it's psychic it's not Controlled remote viewing is a process whereby you get in touch with your subconscious mind and you uh, uh, communicate with it to find out what it knows. And part of the uh, way of communicating with it is to ask it questions. <clears throat> and now in the CRV training, we teach you how to do that, how to communicate. But this exercise is called a phase to it because phase two is describing what you get. And um, there are a lot of phase to it pictures similar to this on our website at crviewer.com. And they're freely available. Anyone can call them up and look at them and start describing. Now, one of the reasons we do this is because um, the interview and report process that CRV is is a uh, very organized way in which you can get the most information uh, possible. And uh, once you learn how to do this with CRV, it extends into the rest of life too, where as you uh, are asking questions of people or as you are seeking information, you can uh, do it in an organized way that will help you uh, get the most information possible. For example, this picture here. Which I'm trying to per center up and blow up. Uh, it's, oh, okay. There we go. <clears throat> you can see more oh. detail. Um, mine didn't change, but okay. okay. Um, the uh, normal person might say, well, this is a sheep ranch. Okay. There are millions of sheep ranches all over the world. That doesn't really tell you anything. The way a uh, organized controlled remote viewer would do it would be to say, look, there's something here that's man-made. There's also something biological. There's also land, and there's also some plants, vegetation or, you know, plant life out there. Then... <clears throat> You go to the first man-made and you say, oh, describe the man-made as best you can. Well, it's white. It has a door. It's round. It's got patchwork. It's made out of patchwork. Uh, looks like something somebody could live in. In fact, it is. It's a yurt. Um, and uh, um, it's... Uh, looks like it's sewn together, it's put up, it's tent-like, and so on. Then you go to the second man-made, and you say, well, this is rough <clears throat> hewn, it's uh, made out of wood, it's uh, got a flat top on it, it's got square edges, uh, the color is brown, the roof is bluish, and out in front of it, it's got what looks like uh, some kind of stonework, or else just... Uh, ground that is trodden flat by people or whatever. Over in front of the uh, white one, the yurt, there's a little walkway coming out with a fence around the entire thing. Okay, the fence <coughs> is brown. It looks like it's made out of wood. It's uh, uh, two horizontal strands and uh, is, you know, built just in the regular old fence style. Now, the fence completely goes around another area where uh, the biologicals are. The biologicals are short, furry, uh, 
fluffy even, I guess you could say. Uh, they have an animal smell to them, um, and they're crowded. There's a great number of them. Most of them are inside this fenced-in area. Some of them are outside, and the ones that are outside appear to be whiter than the ones inside because the ones inside are brownish. Outside, there also seems to be a human-looking figure out there, which is seems to be standing there watching them. And this is all on ground, which is barren. Uh, but beyond that, there is grassy land, bushy land. There are some trees on further out. The trees are red on top, and uh, and you know, signifying that it may be fall or something like that. And so, in the process of just simply going through and starting with what's called gestalts. Uh, gestalt is the enus of something. There's landiness, there's vegetativeness, there's bio enus, there's man made about the site and everything. And uh, <clears throat> there's a fenced in quality uh, and so on. So you get the basic qualities and then you go back and you simply say, now the first quality I was telling you about is, and you start describing it. And so this organized method has helped the U.S. military to gain intelligence information, uh, spying type work, gathering of intelligence for uh, uh, foreign plans and intentions of leaders and uh, uh, foreign military operations. And so this is a well-developed system and it works, works really well. And uh, this can be applied to anything. Uh, you go in and a nurse goes in and she says, you know, how are you today or how are we today? And she gets an organ recital and that, you know, this organ hurts, that organ hurts and so on. But uh, <clears throat> at the same time, if the patient is saying this organ hurts, then you go back and you get details on it. You get all the gestalts first and then you go back for the details on each one. And as you do, uh, you ask the appropriate questions on each. Uh, let's say an auto mechanic is uh, asking, okay, what's wrong with your car? Well, it makes a rrr rrr -ru -ru sound. Okay, there's the rrr rrr -ru -ru sound. You've got the car, you've got the sound. Now, specifics, where does the sound seem to be coming from? Is it high pitch, is it low pitch, is it constant? Is it just every now and then? Is it only when you step on the gas and things like this? And as you ask these questions, you get more and more detailed information, um, which is going to help you make decisions. It's going to help you uh, understand what's going on a whole lot better and so forth. And so anyway, <clears throat> this is the um, part of the controlled remote viewing process where the uh, detailed information is gained. And uh, there are, of course, a lot of other very important uh, parts to the CRV process. But this is the one where you simply sit and you say to your subconscious mind, give me the main things. Oh, OK, there's something man-made, there's something biological, and there's land. OK, good. Now let's go look at the man-made things. Now let's go look at the biological. Let's get the colors. Let's get the shapes. Let's get the, any sounds that are made. Let's get any smells that are made, and so on. Uh, I can tell you, <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you how the sheep pen smells, but inside the yurt, uh, there's definitely a smell of a thing called uh, ark. And uh, that is uh, fermented mare's milk, and it puts up a smell. And um, uh, there's a habit that these um, Kyrgyzstani sheep herders have. When you go into the yurt, you reach over and you stir the milk, the fermented milk, so that it uh, makes it a more fermented drink. And uh, so these smells that you pick up, 
from your subconscious mind, maybe inside or outside or whatever, but the fact is you're still asking and getting answers in the way that is most qualified to get the most information possible. And no matter what your job, whether it's remote viewer uh, or, or anything else, information is a big key part of the whole process to doing a good job. So anyway, that's, that's the CRV process. And like I say, there are a lot of these targets, target pictures for you to practice with on the um, website of CRViewer.com. You go there and you look for freebies, and then under that you look for a thing called P2IT. And um, as you open that up, you'll find a whole lot of um, buttons. Each button will bring up a totally different picture, and you can practice. Uh, it's good practice for learning to explain yourself as well as gaining information as well. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, it definitely helps. And on my screen, I've been uh, zooming in just a little bit on some details. Like at the on the right-hand side of the yurt, for instance, there is something that appears to be a bicycle tire. And a remote viewer might pick up on that. But I'm just yeah. observing in this picture. And it almost looks like a statue up on the left above the yurt, but I think it's actually a rock with probably a sheep or a dog going over it. But I can't yeah. swear to that. It's a little blurry. Yeah, that's what and it looks then, like. Do you happen to notice how many biologicals would you say are in this photo? <laughs> Counting the sheep, you mean? That puts you yeah. to sleep, doesn't it? <laughs> Humans. How many humans do you see? Uh, just surfing back and forth here, I think I see two. There's a um, dark clad person, and then over to his left seems to be a lighter clad person. Aha, I gotcha. Look inside the structure, just inside the open door on the right. If you zoom in right there. Yeah, I'll have to zoom in a whole lot more here. Yeah. Could be, but I can't swear to it. Actually, it looks like it could be a couple of gourds there, but I thought I had to. Doggone it. <laughs> Teacher wins again. <laughs> uh, I really thought it was somebody who's got their elbows up to their face, but I don't think so. You know, they're they're washing their face and their elbows. But I'm oh, yeah. really, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fuzzy. And, uh. I don't think so. I think we have a couple of gourds hanging there. Dog on it. Could be. Wins again. Yeah. Boy, I wish I could um, roam around in my uh, picture area and bring up another one. I would love to get your comments on on it. Let me see if I can pa pause this recording for just a second. Noise. Yeah, that noise. That's a um, spoon on the side of a tea teacup. Or I guess that. Uh, here is, we're recording again. What would you have to say about ambiance and luminance here on this one? Again, image courtesy of Steve Arene. Okay. <clears throat> on this, if I were to describe this, mm -hmm. I would say, I would start off with the gestalts. <clears throat> okay. I would say the... Uh, you want to pause the recording? No, oh, okay. Um, I would say that uh, this place has um, energy and something man-made. On the man-made, I would say there are different kinds of man-mades. Uh, one is flat, horizontal, made out of wood, slatted, and so forth. The uh, the other is glass. It's clear, appears to have some water in it, has a thick bottom on it. Uh, another is metallic and uh, is, you know, in the shape of teapots and some uh, some of ours and so forth. Um, there's also a uh, 
basket, <clears throat> uh, which is woven, has an open weave, has something in it that looks like bread or uh, or some kind of napkins or something. Uh, there's a far wall which is uh, vertical, appears to also be made out of wood. Uh, the uh, some of the um, there's a coffee cup which appears to be full of coffee. Uh, there's a, uh, a set of candles which appear to be white. They're wax. They're lit from above from the flame on each one, and so on. Over to the right of the right teapot, there is a um, uh, cozy cloth and the two teapots are on a tray which is metallic and uh, which appears to be sort of um, decorated on the right end of it at least. Um, over to the far left there seems to be some cloth type stuff hanging down and not quite reaching the tabletop. So I have no idea what that is. Otherwise it's dark. It has a warm ambiance to it. Um, it is <clears throat> uh, a light spot in a dark place, and um, the lighting is yellowish, and so forth. And so, by giving descriptors like this, um, you know, you can describe the ambiance. You can also describe the feeling. And this place feels cozy and homey and uh, friendly. And uh, this place just has a uh, a welcoming feel to it. That's and the so, word. Uh -huh. Welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and friendly. Yeah. Uh, it's as though if you were to walk up to this place, you'd be poured a cup of tea. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. I agree. The candle wax is dripping. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been lit very long because there's not a lot of dripping, and so the candles are tall. They're not, uh, and the tops of the candles are flat rather than uh, sort of melted out over to one side, which would indicate that they've been burning for a long time. Mm -hmm. I like the uh, silver on the teapots and coffee pots compared to look at the verdigris on especially the lone candle. It's a, it appears to be a little greenish hue on top of the metal. No, Maybe really? I'm not seeing that. Um, the candle that sits right in front of the, looks like a, a flatbread or this, the basket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and to me, that looks green. Greenish on top of, say, brass or something. I don't I see use. I don't see any green at all in my uh, my. Uh, Thanks for making it bigger. Well, my uh, yeah. uh, monitor may be tuned differently or something. Well, I'm zooming in on mine and I've uh, got it up to 400 here. And uh, same here. I have, to, I have to center it again. Now down at the bottom of the candle, around it, mm -hmm. there might be some greenish type stuff, maybe from another yeah, candle, who knows. I meant the candle stick, per se. Oh, the candle stick, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Maybe I didn't say that. The oh, yeah, stick. I see some some kind of greenish on it, yeah. But uh, I thought that was a very, I, I've always wondered what you would have to say about luminance and ambiance with that photo. Yeah. Uh, the luminance, of course, is uh, centrally lit, um, uh, dimly lit, um, and, you know, warmly lit, yellowish lighting. And, the, um, the ambiance, of course, is, I mean, just very clearly that of being friendly, welcoming, and so on. So that that image was taken in Morocco. Oh, really? Uh-huh. 
yeah, he's a world traveler. He has a home that he has built over in uh, Thailand, and he, I just saw a note from him on Facebook. He's mm -hmm. headed there tomorrow. They're not flooded. Yeah. And his home is uh, made in a dome, several domes that are connected. Oh, neat. Yeah. And... Um, I got a message from Thailand wanting me to come teach, and I had to turn it down. That was kind of painful. Oh, I bet. Yeah, here's another one of his. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He gets around. What does he do? He's a flight attendant. Oh, well, no wonder. Yeah. Yep. Yes, he does. And... uh I'm trying to think if there's any other points about P2 exercises in general. We talked about how they would be important to remote viewing, but anybody who observes for a living or mm -hmm. hobby, what have you, you know, whether it's someone who needs to observe their environment in law enforcement or you mentioned nursing. Yeah, and, uh, of uh, course, you know, the... There are several TV shows now and detective shows where they have this consultant comes in uh -huh. because the consultant observes things that the cops just naturally pass right on over. Uh -huh. um, Monk, Castle, um, Unforgettable is another one that's on now. And uh, these are all shows that have simply a person helping the police uh, simply because this person observes, I mean, can see what's right in front of them. And, of course, for remote viewing, the thing is that um, if you can't describe what's right in front of you, then how can we send your mind halfway around the world and have you describe what's over there? And the answer is you can't. So this is a necessary exercise for the control remote viewing, but... Uh, it is a wonderful exercise for anyone, nurses, uh, auto mechanics, uh, stamp collectors, uh, you know, the one stamp collector that sees that one little flaw that everybody else misses winds up with the money for the stamp. Yeah. Uh, the, the latest image I put up is Myanmar Temple, and it has uh, a hut with some clothes, maybe it's caretakers, I'm not sure, or somebody whose grandpa happened to buy the land right behind one of the temples. But anyway, um, if you would talk possibly for a moment about the ambiance exercise that you teach, because when I was just at the Martha Rogers Society, no, highly, Society for Rogerian of Rosarian Scholars, and that is Martha Rogers' nursing theory. One nurse, actually, and I have a quote from one of the books, says, you know, sometimes you just walk in, it's on the poster presentation, sometimes you walk into some place and you just feel the difference. You know when you enter the room. Yeah. You know, you know that you're going to have a good day or a bad day. Or you just, the whole environment just hits you like That's a wave. Right. Yeah. And so uh, that's the ambiance exercise, and right here would be two. Well, that's not, that, you know, that's, not, that's not the exercise, but that's uh, but, what the exercise is all about. Correct. Okay. So uh, I was wondering if you might speak a little bit about the ambiance exercise and how it makes you more aware and more sensitive to your, to your surroundings, et cetera. Yeah. Absolutely. To, uh, the object of the exercise is to become more sensitive to the ambiance around you. And the ambiance is the feel of the room. Uh, the uh, fact is that the feel of the room changes constantly with everything that changes inside the room. Um, you know, when somebody walks into the room and they're just giddy happy, the whole room feels happier. Uh, if they're flaming angry, the whole room gets tense and all that. And um, those are the big, gross uh, 
easy to recognize things. The fact is that you can sensitize yourself to smaller and smaller changes within the room, and when you do, you can pick up on information that you can't get through any of your other senses. And ambiance is, in fact, the sixth sense. Psychic functioning is actually the seventh sense. Um, but uh, the way you do this is anytime, the way you start off doing this, anytime you walk through a portal of any kind, uh, through a doorway, the bathroom door, your car door, your bedroom door, the kitchen, walk into the kitchen, whatever, um, walk into your office, walk out of your office, whatever. Um, all you do is you tell yourself, notice the change in the feel. As you do this, <clears throat> you will get more and more sensitive simply because you're paying more and more attention to it, and you will learn how to uh, how to become sensitive to your environment. When that happens, some actually kind of strange things start happening. You realize that um, that you are picking up on things from the people around you, from the things around you, and so forth. And um, you're standing and talking to a person, and that person all of a sudden lies to you. The ambiance, they may be a perfectly good liar, but the ambiance is going to change, and if you're sensitive to it, you'll pick up on the lie if they're telling the truth the same way. If there's something important to them or not important to them, you'll pick up on those, uh, those changes in the ambiance. This ambiance exercise has actually 20 steps to it, and the um, higher steps uh, are such that without looking, you can tell whether somebody walks into the room with a red shirt on or a blue shirt or something like that, simply because the change that is made in the room will be able to be picked up by the very sensitive person. And this isn't psychic. It's just that you start uh, being aware of things in your own immediate environment that the other people around you are totally unaware of. And uh, well, knowledge is power. <laughs> to use the uh, U.S. intelligence uh, efforts uh, motto, knowledge is power. Um, and in the workplace, in the family. Uh, one of the worst things that a uh, wife can say to a husband is, I'll tell you what's wrong. You don't know what's wrong. That's what's wrong. And one of the reasons it's bad is because she's right. <laughs> uh, he has no idea what the, what the problem is. But um, if a man becomes trained and becomes sensitive, he can pick up on what's wrong even before she does. And um, and so uh, the difference that things like that will make in your life, in your interpersonal relationships and so on, are, are vast. I mean, they're just enormous differences. And uh, uh, <clears throat> all it takes is to start out by simply, if you work in a cubicle, fine, what's the ambiance in your cubicle. How does it feel? Now then, walk out of your cubicle. Uh, it's going to feel different. Each time you walk out of your cubicle, it's going to feel slightly different from the way it did the first time because the interactions in the office are being different. And if you can pick up on that sensitivity, if you can get sensitive enough to pick up on that change in ambiance, uh, you, you you know, you have just solidified your place in the workplace or in the home. You have a teenage kid. Hey, you better learn the ambiance because there's no talent, you know. What would you do at school today? Nothing. The way that teenage kid says nothing can tell you an entire book about what that kid did in school today or after school or before school or whatever. And um, 
and this is a very valuable exercise. Um, you need to learn it. Um, it's not on the website right now. I plan to put it on the website, and I'm not trying to sell you a book here, but if you get the book The Seventh Sense by Lynn Buchanan, um, all of these exercises are in the back of the book and the appendices. And so um, these exercises, whether you're remote viewing or not, can actually change your life for the better. Um, was there anything else you wanted to know about the ambiance exercises? Well, just for anyone who might be listening, and we do have someone who's joined us who's never, I don't think, been in one of our webinars. Let me check in here. Ah, I hear some background noise. Hello. I'm not sure how to pronounce your first name. Fletcher. It looks like. Fletcher, are you able to hear all right? This is just an audio check. That's okay. Not everybody wants to talk. But uh, for anyone who might be li um, listening in and following along, for instance, I'm looking at, I don't know if you happen to have the image up with the temples with the hut in front. Do you have that one up in front of you? Who, me? Yeah, you. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if we were walking around that environment, we, we, we would be thinking outside things. It looks sunny. It's probably warm. Can't say that for sure. Uh, tropical. But if you would like to walk us through, like, what it would be like to stroll around outside where it's grassy and then inside the hut where I would assume that people are living, and then what would it be like when you went into one of the temples that's probably empty and probably hasn't had anything going on there for a while? Oh, that I doubt that. I'm but, asking you? Yeah, but I can't explain that, I mean, because I would have to go do it. But, uh -huh. uh, but, but wouldn't uh, you think that, I mean, there are tons of old temples sitting here. Don't you think they'd be musty and cool? And so oh, on. And yeah, musty and cool and ill kempt, you know, not mm -hmm. not kept and up dusty. really well. Uh -huh. However, they're not they're not in disuse. Uh -huh. I know that. Uh, okay. They are in use. They're just. Uh, every one of them, you think? I mean, there are a lot of them here. Yeah, just about every one of them. Yeah. Wow. But um, <clears throat> but they're not kept up really well. Uh huh. As far as the homes, uh, just judging this home, which I shouldn't do from the outside, it looks pretty primitive. Now, they may have, you know, five TVs in their bedroom in there. I don't know. But, uh, right. They have laundry hanging out off to the right. And I was just thinking the environment outside in uh, the smells would be different and uh, there would be people living in the little hut or cottage, if whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Compared to mm -hmm. the temple, where it would probably be cool and I don't know and about damp, would, but dark. And people would come to visit and then leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, other than where you've directed everyone on your website and to the back of the seventh sense to have a more structured understanding of all the exercises that you've tried to just touch on with us here, anything that you could recommend? other than your website, just daily things or uh, tools that you've seen out. Like, I know people who don't work with color very much, and you can refer them to color charts in paint stores or, because I've actually done this, I've sent people to paint stores uh, and told them to look at the colors there. And yeah, but the thing is, have they ever gone? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They've asked and me for advice because they don't, to me, or to them, you know, all pinks are red. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and you don't have to be able to put a name to each one, but it's good to be able to start pick up, picking up the changes. Well, yeah, so, that's true. You know, any, any brilliant suggestions along that line that people might be able to do? Or for things like colors and sounds and so forth, um, we have an exercise called uh, Go Hug a Couple of Trees. Um, if you uh, see an orange, 
look for another orange and you find another orange, but then you look back and forth between the two to see that they're different colors of orange. You will call them or both orange, and yet you'll see they're different colors. Uh, let's say you're going to a yard sale, uh, and there's a hairbrush there. Reach down and feel the hairbrush, and then look for something else that's bristly. Um, or there's a, um, there's a, a box. Pick up the box, see how heavy it is, reach over and pick up another box, and compare the two. As you do these, you start sensitizing yourself to weight and uh, to differences in weight. And you can actually get to where you can, uh, you can pick something up and tell how much it weighs, I mean, to the ounce. Uh, I worked in a carpet shop one time, and the uh, owner could walk into a room, look around, even with the furniture in the room, and go back and cut a carpet that would exactly fit the room. Now, he never measured. It would exactly fit the room. All of the little pieces that go over into the doorway were being exactly the right place and all that, simply because he had done this so many times. He had sensitized himself to sizes. Uh, he, could, he could look at the furniture and know exactly what color carpet would match. It's practice. That's all it is. And uh, if you do that, what you're going to find is that um, uh, you are sensitizing yourself to the world around you, and you will start seeing things that, that I mean, people standing there and looking at the same scene will never see. Uh, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the big dangers of riding a motorcycle is that people look for cars, and you can have your headlights on and a motorcycle and all, and they won't see you. They'll pull out and run into you, and yet, uh, um, you know, it's not that hard an exercise to simply look around you and start seeing the scene you're, that uh, is right there in front of your eyes and start noticing things. Uh, I've had people do this ambiance exercise and call me back and say that they're like 40 years old and for the first time in their life they've been awake. Uh, they feel like they're, they're awake and seeing the world around them. We go through life with blinders on and this ambiance exercise will teach you how to take the blinders off and see things as they really are. And I can vouch for the fact that uh, I don't so, know so much lately, but uh, usually, if, say, if the power's off and we're on emergency generators and so on at work, I'm the first one that can, I'll know as soon as the air comes back on before anybody else. I'm usually a few seconds ahead of them. Yeah. But anyway, um, I'm looking at this image, and some things we take for granted are relationships. Like yeah. the relationship of the, of this little hut to the big temple behind it and dimensions. But anyway, I was just seeing if there's Yeah, the relationships of sizes and shapes and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, the size of the temple that's right there in the center as opposed to the one that's over behind the tree mm -hmm. and so on and the shape and everything else. Um, yeah. But the, the the thing is that we do go through life with blinders on, not only in seeing things, but also in hearing, uh, and with every other sense that we have, ambiance included, and psychic included, in fact. And um, uh, like uh, the baby cries, the mother hears it. Hopefully the father hears it and is paying close enough attention that the, he hears it. And uh, neither one of them move because it's not important. And yet the baby cries again and all of a sudden the mother is up and running and uh, uh, the father may still be sitting there. The mother knows the difference between the tiniest differences between the two different cries. 
and she knows which one's important and which one's not. Um, and like I say, uh, uh, you know, husbands need to learn how to <laughs> see what's right in front of them, so they can so they can get the difference in their wives' mood and so on. A uh, wife, I think, has traditionally more sensitivity to her husband than a husband has to his wife, uh, which is kind of sad, but. Uh, but it can be developed, and it can be developed to where you know what somebody is thinking, how they're feeling, and all that, before you know you even um, have to ask the question. It's a very important exercise. Yeah, I agree. Well, I cannot think of another question. Fletcher, do you happen to have any questions you'd like to ask of Lynn? Excuse me, I thought I had that sneeze muted, but I guess it didn't. It's okay. I didn't pick it up. Oh, good. Uh, Fletcher, there's a chat area down below there. Or Fletcher? Uh, there's a chat area down below there that you can type in, and it says send to host or presenter or uh, host and presenter, and if you type in there, we can uh, pick up on any questions you have or anything you want to say. And wonder if you had anything to add to it. Uh, here we go. I have a message. I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. Do you have any answers? We need those, too. <laughs> it was nice of you to join us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I don't think I have any more questions. Any last-minute thoughts? Um, just uh, practice, practice. That's, you know, you have to okay. practice at life. You can't just skim through it and miss all of it so uh no dress rehearsals no uh and no uh no encores either as far as we know <laughs> yeah okay well i can't think of anything else so uh thank you very much for being here for us and i will post on a few lists that we did this if anybody would like to listen in and uh it will be there for them probably in the next day or so Okay. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Talk to you Let's later. See. All right. Bye bye. Bye.